Kane is not a weapon of duels. Kane is not a fight weapon. It's a weapon of superiority. It's a symbol and a simulator at the same time. Sicilians don't hide the fact that the technique of the cane work does exist. No one knows how to use a cane. If one looked into the ways of working with a cane, into the way it functions, it turned into a dangerous weapon. Not all were allowed to carry a cane. It was only allowed to a person who was in power. It's a tool of a ruling class. Cain is one of the central elements of rain tradition, which was restored by the scientist Oleg Maltsev during another expedition raid. Art of working with a cane was held in deep secret and was taught inside family in two directions, the criminals and the bourgeoisie. Other ones didn't carry canes. Underworld kings, so called underworld power, and civil authority carried canes. Basically, at some point in history, we see that canes were carried by ruling class all over the world. Neil Aznabishin was the first and only person who described cane work. Nobleman by birth, who came from a wealthy merchant family and spoke in five languages. He wrote a number of memorandum about the cane work. The memorandum were not even with drawings, it was just a text. But even from the text it becomes very clear how the cane work is done. All this memorandum have never seen the light as it was classified as the secret information. For most people who had no access to archives, memorandum remained secret. In the middle of the 20th century, a part of memorandum was revealed. But even if you find them, you will see that it's not enough to work a cane in a sophisticated way. If you are proficient in a work with a cane and can apply it in a multiply number of ways, there is no chance for two, three, four or even five opponents to resist you. In other words, you have a sword in your hand and it's ridiculous to fight against a sword barehanded or with a knife. I mean, it provides absolute protection, as well on physical level, against any number of opponent in an urban environment. This way, one who sets a goal to master a weapon of superiority, he needs to make a research and restore the technique of cane work, which means that he will have another journey into the history of humanity. So what do we see? The rain tradition is divided into two types of people. One, people that are secret people, and people that are seen. And when we say secret people, we mean that these people use a dagger. Remember, in Europe those people were even called the Knights of Clock and Dagger. Cain is a symbol of people who are public, who walk around the city. In rain tradition, people depicted with cane can be found not only on paintings and engravings, but even inside temples. There is a ghost hanging in there. 
I mean, there is a mannequin in hat, beautiful jacket, holding a cane. Obviously, historically, cane was an utmost symbol of power and superiority. So in such a case, where can one find a full system of training with a cane? Undeniably, this system can be found in rain. In a secret part of the memorandum, Neil Aznavishin doesn't disguise his relation to graduates of the University of Heidelberg. This institution is one of the academies where the envoys of the rain tradition are trained. Among graduates of the institution, you will unexpectedly find a number of well-known names such as Sofia Kavalevskaya, Dmitry Mendeleev, Nikolai Miklucha Maklai and many others. Other than that, a number of traditions that are directly related to the art of handling a cane has a place in this institution. In order to ascertain that it is so, it's enough to look into the formation of the secret societies at the University of Heidelberg. There are three types of the societies. Groups that have only male members or female members. As well, there are students group with male and female ones. Each society has a noble emblem. These emblems are depicted in a punishment cell, which was a training system. The vast majority of societies require a skill of handling a sword and a cane. The next thing that we'll learn is how to hold a cane. The first grip is done like this or like that. The second grip is done like this. Then you need to learn how to handle a cane in order to strike or to pull the cane in order to block the strikes or make strikes. Next step that we should learn is how to shift cane from one hand to another. Strikes are made both from here and here. Next topic is shuffling a cane. One, two, three. Cane is a weapon of superiority. It's not a weapon of murder. It allows to accurately distribute force. So you can make a strong or weak strike. You can hit in a way it's offensive to your opponent. It's quite offensive when one gets hit on an ape. As you can see, it's a kind of a strike that is remembered for a long time. After we have learned how to make different type of strikes, short strikes with the wrist, we can try more powerful and longer from the elbow. Okay. 
So the power of a strike will increase or decrease depending on the way you make strike from wrist, elbow or shoulder. A long grip looks like this. One, two. The next step you need to learn is how to rotate a cane. Yesterday I showed you how it's done. A very uncomfortable thing. And from here comes immediately a strike. person seriously becomes conscious. It's a great therapy. Then we learn how to change the direction of a strike. It looks like I want to hit the head and the opponent expects a strike to head, but actually I hit his legs. The next thing you need to learn is how to free yourself from the cane trap. It's clear that you need to learn to grab away your opponent's cane. And then we learn to use legs. Now we learn to encounter opponent by making the short strikes. First thing that grabs my attention is that it's the only place that I have seen so far where the technique of work with a cane was preserved. How did a cane appear in the Mediterranean? Let's remember the messenger technology. For many centuries, the technique of the cane work was spread all over the world together with the messengers of rain. An integral cane, where the sword is hidden inside, has appeared in the Mediterranean and Central Europe. Despite the fact that Sicilians are very reticent people and it's not so easy to have a talk with them, they don't disguise that there is a certain technique of a cane work and that a stiletto is inserted in it. Take a look. One is left with a spear or a stiletto in his right hand. Depending on the adeptness of a person, and a stick remains in the left hand. The boston is one of the varieties a traditional Sicilian and Italian weapon. An integral cane allows putting a person into two planes, and it's the usage of the hidden active defense technology. It lets one to put a person between a stick and a saber, which makes one distinctly advantageous in a fight. Since if you are skillful with a stick and a broad sword, you have no problem. And if you are used to work with both of these types of weapons, if you practiced regularly with a cane, then opponent has no way out. Just imagine how many troubles you can do with two canes. And if you used to work with both of these types of weapons, that is, 
If you have practiced regularly with a cane, then opponent has no way out. Afterwards, one is left with a knife in one hand and with a stick in the other hand. It can be clearly seen all over Sicily and Italy. There is a some kind of a twist. Needless to say, when one is not allowed to carry a knife, he decides to hide it in a stick. Why? Well, in order to carry a stick and a knife at the same time. Integral cane comes into existence. When we come to a third stage, I would show one how to put an opponent in two planes. So how we do it? The strikes comes, and I can make strikes both for here and here. I put an opponent in two planes, and then I hit him both from here and here. Sometimes it happens that an opponent comes close to you or traps you. In such a case, you need to learn how to make strikes from wrist, from here, learn how to break his legs and strike towards groin area and in other internal parts of body. Also, learn how to make strikes from here. The first purpose of a cane was its application against an armed person with a cold weapon. Before starting working with a cane against cold weapons, first one has to master cold weapon work, so that there is an effective skill of attack and defense model using a cane. Work against a knife begins with the strongest step, when a hand is in this position. This is how the Normans hold a knife. One understands that a knife is powerless over a cane. We will not find an outermost number of tricks. Let's find out why Neil Aznabishin had to write this memorandum. The Aznabishin's headmasters gave him a task to provide the police officers who worked under the cover with certain methodological appliances for cane work. Originally, cane was meant to be used against a certain class of people. According to modern history, it was used against the criminals. Criminals were not allowed to take up any weapon. In other words, one was not allowed to hold nothing but a knife. All matters were to be settled by the knife. It's obvious that the power of a knife doesn't work over the cane. That's why the cane was in the service of the police department. It's very easy to detain a criminal using cane. One would make criminal conscious using cane. Then he would handcuff him and bring to police. Important thing that should be noted is that a cane had a place in criminal tradition too. A man convicted once, probably convicted noblemen were the most skillful. In 1917, these kind of people, I mean nobility, turned into criminals. 
Those who refuse to cooperate with the Soviet authorities have become criminals. Education, money, ideas on how to make money and where to take from. Certainly, it has always been so. People who had ideas about making money, people who had ideas about making money and at the same time had a criminal attitude, become authorities for a certain number of prisoners or criminals, became authorities for a certain number of prisoners or criminals. Criminals were not allowed to take up any weapon. In other words, one was to allow to hold nothing but a knife. All matters were to be settled with a knife. It's very easy to detain a criminal using cane. One would make criminal conscious using cane. Carrying a cane was not forbidden by any law, so anybody could carry a cane. And if one knew about how to handle it, cane became a dangerous weapon of any thief. I'm not saying that this is the whole list of tricks. Perhaps something can be made up. If a man takes a hold of someone's cane, it's worse for him. Now he will try to get a hold of my cane. And when he's trying to do it, he gets hit on the head. Because his both hands are occupied. Then a man is pulled. Look what's happened. It's a criminal part of the society. There were such situations when a person was given this side of the cane. He pulled cane to his side and at that moment person grabbed his spear. Person was left with a cane and was stabbed in the leg. Afterwards, cane was picked up and person was killed. It's necessary to hide a stick from him. He won't even know where is a stick. You may strike at any moment. When he starts moving and isn't expecting that you will break his leg instead of hitting his head. When feet start moving, tricks being used. It's time to learn how to fight against more powerful forces. That is against two or three people. There is one and another. As you can see, there is almost no need to move anywhere. The actuality of the cane was not lost even when firearms appeared. Instead of a sword, there was a double-barreled gun. Why double-barreled gun? The matter is that all nobles were hunters. For this reason, at some point in time, there were people in Russia who could hit the center of a plane hard at a distance of 50 meters. They used cane, inside of which there was a hidden, double-barreled gun. It should be noted that since these times the cane hasn't lost its superiority. Moreover, it has acquired some additional advantages in the modern society. Cane is permitted to carry. And if you beat up a man with a stick, Nothing will happen to you from a juridical standpoint view. The most terrible thing that may happen in this case is that you may be brought to an administrative responsibility. If you stab someone with a knife, you may kill him or leave him with moderate or severe injuries. This might lead to a criminal court proceeding and conviction. When you walk around with a cane, when your cane is at the back seat of your car or in the trunk, there is no problem. Nobody will ask you about you carrying a stick. K 
Cain is always an attribute of a respected individual. In places you can't enter with the weapons, let's say casino, reputable clubs or offices, while going through metal detector, everything may be taken away from you, except the cane. Cane is a weapon of training and not a weapon of murder, since it has undeniable advantages over a knife or any other weapon with a short or long blade, which was used at that time. With a good cane you can stop an attack with a spear or any other weapon. Any civilian could stop such an attack. That is the reason that cane turned into a certain cult, a certain religious symbol of power. Cain is a safe, legal and very effective weapon that may allow you to protect yourself in any situation.